The French philosopher Gaston Bachelard once wrote an analysis of what he called the poetics of space. The inside of a house, he said, acquires a sense of intimacy, secrecy, security, real or imagined, because of the experiences that come to seem appropriate for it. The objective space of a house, its corners, corridors, cellars, rooms, is far less important than what poetically it is endowed with, which is usually a quality with an imaginative or figurative value we can name and feel. Thus, a house may be haunted, or home-like, or prison-like, or magical. So space acquires emotional and even rational sense by a kind of poetic process whereby the vacant or anonymous reaches of distance are converted into meaning for us here. The same process occurs when we deal with time. Much of what we associate with or even know about such periods as long ago or the beginning or at the end of time is poetic, made up. For a historian of Middle Kingdom Egypt, long ago will have a very clear sort of meaning, but even this meaning does not totally dissipate the imaginative, quasi-fictional quality one senses lurking in a time very different and distant from our own. For there is no doubt that imaginative geography and history help the mind to intensify its own sense of itself by dramatizing the distance and difference between what is close to it and what is far away. This is no less true of the feelings we often have that we would have been more at home in the 16th century or in Tahiti. Yet, there is no use in pretending that all we know about time and space, or rather, history and geography, is more than anything else imaginative. Scholars now do know more about the world, its past and present, than they did, for example, in Gibbon's time. Yet, this is not to say that they know all there is to know, nor, more important, it is to say that what they know has effectively dispelled the imaginative geography and historical knowledge I have been considering. We need not decide here whether this kind of imaginative knowledge infuses history and geography, or whether in the same way it overrides them. Let us just say for the time being that it is there as something more than what appears to be merely positive knowledge. Words are taken from Orientalism by Edward Said.